Hi everybody, welcome to Sandra's Art Studio. Today, the show is going to be a little different. I'm actually testing out a product, and the reason why is because somebody has asked me to help them repair a project, which is a granite backsplash, that in the process of installing it, it cracked a little bit. What they want me to do is color match and make sure that that crack is invisible. So since I've been playing with all of these outlets and matching them to the backsplashes, um, I think I'm a perfect fit. The only thing I need to do is learn how to use this product. This product is used in the granite counter top industry for cracks. And so you see the name K-Bond and it's a knife grade. What that means is that you can actually use it on a backsplash, it's vertical, it's already installed, and it's not going to drip down. So that's what the knife grade is all about. So what I'm going to do is repair a broken piece of granite, and I'm gonna show you that part in a moment. In the meantime, I'm going to show you what I'm going to need for this project, right? So I need, of course, this K-Bond, I need some acetone, okay? I also need this color set, which it comes with 10 colors and it's specially formulated for K-Bond, okay? So I have, I'll tell you what colors I have. I have gray, white, red, brown, black, buff, like a tan, red-brown, yellow, green, and blue. And basically with this set, I can make any color happen. Yeah, even less than this, I can make any color happen, right? So as long as I have the primary colors, I can make any color happen. All right, so we have this, and then we have a brush. All right, and this brush is going to be for cleaning the in between the cracks, and then I wanna have another brush for applying the acetone. Make sure you have plenty of gloves, okay? This happens to be a real shitty set of gloves. I'm sorry if I said that, but these are really bad. I don't know. I mean, I have stuff that sometimes I get like the quantities because I, I, I rather get the quantities for the price break. But in this case, this was not a good investment. I mean, these gloves are so bad. I'm going to show you. Okay. Just for, for the heck of it. I'm going to show you. You see, it's like I have to, I don't like them. The picture doesn't doesn't show how bad they are. It's you know when you try them on, like the cuff is like non-existent. But it doesn't matter for this project. I'll take it. Okay, so it's a shitty set of gloves like this, and I also have with me a palette knife, some popsicle sticks, and some razors, straight edge. Okay, so this product, by the way, it comes with a hardener. Okay. And the ratio for this is like a little pea size to a golf ball. And that's it. So enjoy the show. Okay, so here I have my broken up piece of granite. And the first thing I'm going to do is brush inside the cracks. So that way I get rid of all the loose particles. And before I start mixing this product, I want to make sure that I put some acetone in between the cracks. Make sure you wear some gloves, in my case, some shitty gloves. <laughs> so you want to get the acetone in between the cracks. Just one more step to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. Now, if you had this on a fixed position, I guess you would not be able to do that. So you do the best you can do with what you have, right? So I grab a cardboard after I cleaned in between the cracks. And on this cardboard, I am going to do all my mixes. So once you put a blob of K-Bond on your cardboard, you want to strictly mix it with your colors. Get the colors you want, split, divide, add, take, you know, whatever you want to do. Just don't put the hardener in it until you're absolutely happy with the color. Because once you put the hardener, you only have like a minute to mix it up really good. And then you have four to six minutes to apply this product on your cracks. So it's not a lot of time. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you've seen this product is to do this outdoors because the fumes are pretty strong. So I made the mistake of using this indoors and pretty soon my husband was opening all the windows and all the doors and we had all the fans on and everything just to blow the fumes out of the house. Another thing I want to point out as I was playing with this product 
is that once it gels, it's really hard to take this off of your palette knife or off of your razor blades. So keep that in mind and of course have plenty of palettes for you to play with, you know, like this piece of cardboard. I had spare pieces of cardboard waiting for the second and the third round of playing with K-Bon. Be super, super careful when you're using these razor blades and also keep in mind, one of the things I learned when using this product is that it dries quick and it dries really, really hard. So you get to a point that you are going to have a real hard time scraping it off with the razor blade. So if you want a real clean job, make sure you're really familiar with the timing of this product. So I would say when it starts to get just a little hard, that's when I would want to scrape off the excess from the surface of the granite crack. Because this was my first try, I do have quite a bit of um, K-Bon that got really hard on the surface of the granite and it was absolutely impossible for me to scrape off with the razor blade. So just wanna have you guys keep in mind that timing is very important when using this product. So I did my first round and here I'm doing another round with the K-Bon and I just grab another blob of K-Bon and I'm getting ready to mix some more color with it. And I'm just doing sections at the time because I'm not really sure what the speed of this product is or how to handle it or anything. So if you're doing it for the first time, I suggest you also grab a piece of granite um, that you can play with and mess up and get really familiar with the product as you're doing so. So this whole experiment took me like an hour and here I am in real time just about ready to move on to my third round and connect these two pieces that I have. And by the time that I was ready to do that, I felt like the granite was already glued together and I was amazed of how fast it works. And stay with me on this video. At the end of this video, I am going to give you three things I wish I didn't do and three things I wish I did do. Also, for your information, if you do get some of this paint in different spots that it, it was not meant to be, uh, know that acetone will actually remove the paint. And some people can be a little careless about how they handle product. If you want, in this case, I have like a whole gallon of this product. If I started double dipping, or in other words, if I had a little bit of activator on my stick as I take out some of this um, gel, then I can just ruin the entire batch. So make sure you use a new stick or a new spatula every time you dip into your product. And at this point, I'm basically going for my last round, hoping that everything gets connected nice and smoothly. And I tell you, if you don't remove the gobs of product on your granite while it's still soft, or in other words, before it hardens really good, you're never going to uh, be able to remove it. So keep that in mind the whole time. If you're doing a section at the time, make sure you remove whatever it is on top of your granite before it gets completely hard because it does get so hard. And here I'm trying to remove some of this adhesive from my spatula. And I found that it's better to actually pin my spatula down and pull my spatula back instead of scraping forward with my racer. I don't know if you understand that, but just gotta be really careful with these tools. And now that all my pieces are connected together, it's time for me to do a little bit of the artistry aspect to this whole project. So here I'm going to mix some pigments. And in this case, I find that it's not just a tan, but in this case, it's mixed with a little bit of gray and I had to split it and mix it with a little bit of white. And I take little sections that are not mixed with the hardener. And then I mix it with a different pigment and notice that I'm always trying to scrape. Now, this definitely takes a little bit more practice than what I have here on hand, but it was definitely a good learning experience. But um, here I have a different tone and I'm hitting just some areas of it, not everything, because then I lose that, that chaotic pattern that this particular piece of granite has. And part of the whole artistry too is going in layers doing it quite a few times until you feel like everything is just the right color and everything. Alrighty, I mentioned that I was going to give three tips of do's and don'ts. So do, number one, 
I didn't have a level table and I see how it was affecting the way my granite was coming together. So that's number one. Number two, I would have some bracing devices that would help just to keep it together for like a good 10 minutes while it adheres. And number three, I would have fans on me at all times, even if I'm working outdoors, which that is the way you want to handle this product. And three don'ts. Okay, next time I'm doing this uh, project, don't have a racer without a handle. That I'm never going to do that again because I found that it was very easy for me to, you know, just cut myself in a bad way. Number two, don't do this without some kind of protection for your clothes. So wear an apron. And number three, I thought wearing shitty gloves was going to be okay for this project, but I would say the next time I want more fitted gloves and I want the gloves to have a little bit of a cuff. So those are my three do's and don'ts. And last but not least, I am giving a little test the next day on how strong is this product. I know I'm throwing it on the grass, but still, I think that with the weight of this granite, that if this was not a strong glue, that this would come apart. So in my opinion, this product is super, super strong. And I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope I see you.